Well, uh, another year, another lathe duplicator. I've made a bigger and more substantial lathe duplicator. This time my motivation was to make a chair leg. And instead of using the uh, straight dowel that I used previously, this time I'm gonna make a chair leg that has sort of an elegant taper and a little bit of a bulge, some curvature in it. I wanted a way to make them very even uh, and all the same. So I created this device. Um, I spent quite a while on it actually. I probably could have learned hand turning in that time, but uh, or learned how to replicate my work properly in hand turning. But um, I think it was time well spent making this device. I'm gonna get straight to the cutting. Uh, I'm gonna try and make four identical chair legs. Um, let's see how quickly I can do them and how nice the surface finish looks. Uh, this device uses two different cutters. Uh, the first is a router that goes in here and I've also made an insert that I use for finishing uh, using carbide lathe tools. And I actually don't think I've seen anyone do that uh, yet. I've seen a lot of router lathe videos. I've seen uh, uh, lathe duplicators in an industrial sense with uh, carbide style cutters, but I don't think any I've seen anyone do both within the same device. Uh, uh, maybe it'll be smart, maybe it'll be foolish. Let's, uh, let's find out right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is round over the blank with the router. Okay, so I finished my initial rounding with the router uh, that it went well to do a post-mortem on the cut. It's very nice. One of the keys to success was instead of having the router bit going straight on and using the end of the bit, I was using the side of, um, of the bit by raising the router up slightly and just uh, scraping along the edge. And that, that made for a much smoother cut and the most important thing is there's no tear out at this stage, just at this initial rounding stage. I don't want any big chunks taken out because obviously that would affect the final cut, which is gonna use some of the surface and, and cut away down here, cut away up here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna swap out the router with an insert that I made for this carbide uh, lathe tool. Uh, and I'm gonna do the final cut with that tool. I'm gonna load up a template. I'm gonna follow the template with a follower. Uh, and we're gonna continue on to the final cut. So let's check out how long it takes and uh, if it's a good cut or not.
So this is right after I cut and uh, sanding. I started with 120 and then I think I ended off at 220. Um, this looks pretty good. There's a, a couple little bumps uh, that I think that I made from the hose getting tangled up, but uh, otherwise it's pretty good. Uh, I'm not seeing any big tear outs. Um, this part is a little rough. Yeah, this is, uh, this is generally pretty good for this type of softwood where it's going into the end grain. Um, it's getting a little beat up, but uh, there's really, there's not a lot of tightness to the end grain in softwood. So that's to be expected. Uh, I'm gonna check the tenon. Uh, I want it to be one inch for the uh, chair seat. Yeah, we got one inch of the peak. That's good. It's a little bit over, but that can be resolved. Oh, here's another one that I did. Um, and you'll see uh, it did a great job on the finish. And it also just blazed through this knot like it was, wasn't even there. Um, so that's a nice feature that you can include knots. So that's it. Uh, I've made multiple chair legs. They took this cutting pass took about maybe five minutes per um, cause I was going slowly with the hand crank. Now, one thing I've just learned, I'm still learning how to, uh, to work this device, um, is that just using the, the diamond head cutter is, it's just too much. It can't really hog through wood for the first pass. Uh, even when I get here, it's fine. Um, when there's not that much material being taken away, but as soon as you get to the end of the taper, it started to take away uh, quite a bit, um, like almost a quarter inch at a time. And that's, it's too much for this type of uh, cutter. I need to be able to swap out uh, maybe a rough, do a roughing pass uh, and then do the last like millimeter or so with the, uh, with the diamond head and do it all in one continuous motion. Um, I'm finding if I start and stop, sometimes I can get a uh, little, divots from uh, just the, a slight change in pressure or something. So uh, I have to sort of sand those out, but that's, it's all resolvable. There's nothing really catastrophic. So that, that's it. I mean, you, you've seen it in action. Now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna go, just, I'm just gonna look at the components of this system um, and uh, talk about them a bit more. Okay, so I switched over to the wide angle lens and we'll talk briefly about the build of this thing. Uh, the very first thing is I want to say is you can do a lot better than this. If you're looking to do this kind of thing, to make a more mechanical lathe setup, um, you can, you can do a lot better than this. I hobbled this together with, uh, with scraps, uh, and it, and it shows, um, but you know, it works well. This was very cheap because I had a lot of the stuff already, but if, if you had to buy this, it would be, uh, it would be cheap too. There's a aluminum channel here that allows this main sled to, uh, sort of fit on to, uh, to this structure. Um, and of course, as you've seen, it's driven by the, um, the threaded rod mechanism. The thing that I got right actually was the the overall stiffness of the of the axes. This can move back and forth freely, but it doesn't. There's no play this way because as soon as you bring a router out um, and it's cutting wood that's spinning, that router is going to bounce around like crazy. So this had to be very stiff and solid and this carriage on this bed had to have no play. So I had to sort of devise a method to sort of tighten it up if the wood uh, is wood movement or loosen it up um, and really just clamp it on there. Uh, I thought originally I could sort of move it freely with my hands and really go quick with it, but I ended up, it ended up being so stiff but still movable that I, I went to this threaded rod uh, system. Another necessary thing for me was uh, as soon as I was making the test cuts with a router, obviously having a router suspended in, in, uh, in space and cutting spinning wood, it was an unholy shower of, uh, of chips. Um, and that got, I got tired of that after about four or five tests. 
I spent some time figuring out the best kind of dust collection and um, yeah, I had a lot of misstarts with that. But uh, yeah, eventually I got something that really, it takes it down a lot. Um, the cleaner you keep it, the, you keep dust off of here, which doesn't get jammed under here or get jammed in the mechanisms, whatever. So dust collection is something you might want to think about too, if you're thinking of doing something like this. To sum up again, you can do so much better than this. I'm just giving you an idea of a possibility for um, a device that has linear motion, um, has a very predictable path, uh, it's nice and stiff, and the main feature is that you can you can just put any type of tool you want in there. You could put um, you could make it for a trim router. Uh, if you had a cordless router, it would be amazing. Um, and just as long as you make some sort of round inserts with a cutout and you can put carbide tools in, you can put traditional too, you can put a scraper in there, you put whatever you want in there basically. Don't be afraid to just uh, throw, think about using different tools because uh, that was one of the key elements for me is uh, the router was not giving me the cuts that I wanted. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna try carbide tool and you know, it worked pretty well. Um, and it especially worked well in this very notoriously hard to cut softwood. This is just construction lumber and um, I got a pretty darn good finish out of it. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks.